What's up, everybody? It's your second favorite half-Haitian comedian. I'm just assuming Eric Andre is most people's favorite half-Haitian comedian, so I'll take sil silver. I'm out here walking my dog, who I just want to clarify I don't plan on eating. I just will feed her and pet her and uh, take her for walks. No consuming of the dog. But I want to talk today about the filibuster, because future President Kamala Harris said she would eliminate it for abortion rights, which may, really means she'd probably just eliminate it. And I think that's a good thing. Now, the same chorus of relics keep talking, uh, like Kirsten Cinema, a woman who bragged about her ability to distract Republican senators with her cleavage. So she's obviously somebody I trust with safeguarding uh, our Constitution. And then there's leathery former quarterback Cole Namath, or as you know him, Joe Manchin, who will not, re not endorse Kamala Harris. So I guess now she's definitely going to lose West Virginia without his fading, irrelevant endorsement. But here's why they should get rid of the filibuster. A lot of people are saying erroneously, well, when the Democrats got rid of it for, for Supreme Court justices, you see how well that worked out. Well, Democrats didn't. They got rid of it for appellate judges because Mitch McConnell, the racist fossilized turtle, was blocking judicial appointments for President Obama. Uh, and I didn't hear any of the so-called constitutionalists, which isn't a thing, by the way. If you check somebody's Twitter bio, beware of the following words. Faith, family, freedom, Second Amendment, and constitutionalist. Because if they have three or more of those in their Twitter bio, they're definitely an asshole and probably poorly educated. But I will say this. He didn't do it. He did it for appellate judges, and it was Mitch McConnell and the Republicans who did it for Supreme Court judges. Now, some people think that the filibuster is some sort of hallowed thing in our Constitution. Uh, it's not. It's a custom that's just become sort of entrenched in the way we do things. And to think it's still necessary or a good thing, you have to realize Republicans, and yes, it's Republicans, sorry, are the ones suppressing democracy, stifling it, and when you look at the Senate already, the, the, the Democrats, the 50 Democrats, represent a much larger percentage of the population. And when it only takes 41 Republican senators to block, it's even less of the population that they're impeding from usually implementing somewhat popular to very popular policies. So already the Senate has become anti-democratic to a point that the founders didn't really perceive. And on top of that, does anybody remember when Mitch McConnell stole a Supreme Court seat from the Democrats and wouldn't even have a hearing uh, on Merrick Garland? That's a much bigger deal. Asking the Senate to safeguard, oh, and here's Cookie. Hey, Cookie. See, she's alive, not getting eaten. When uh, all these people who are, oh, the, the filibuster, we must safeguard it. Ha oh, Lord. What about stealing a Supreme Court seat? Because you only safeguard the filibuster to maintain a certain decorum and deliberative status to the Senate. But if the Republicans have already hijacked a Supreme Court seat, that's like, that's like charging somebody with burglary after they've gotten away with two murders. Um, it's a lesser issue. So as much as we want to pretend and act like the filibuster is this sacred thing, it's not. It has been thoroughly abused and turned into a weapon of impeding any progress and stopping Congress from doing their job. And most importantly, the Senate, yes, was given, they were given six-year terms because they were supposed to be a more deliberative body, not as tied to power and immediate elections as the House of Representatives is. When the House acts crazy, as bad as Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert are, when they act crazy, the founders much more envisioned that in terms of the whims of the people and all these different districts being represented by different people, then they did a Senate that also operated in a craven, power-hungry manner every two years, which is what Mitch McConnell does. He does not run the GOP in the Senate like a deliberative body worried about the long-term uh, health of the nation. He runs it like, I don't need to get into power every two years. We have elections. I'm just going to run like that. So you have senators with senatorial power but the whims and selfishness and power-hungry obsession as people in the House. So Kamala Harris, fuck the filibuster, get rid of it. I, I, I endorse that. And uh, anybody who disagrees usually will have a very shitty self-serving reason. It's over. Get rid of the filibuster. Let's actually get some laws that will help the people. Um, the filibuster, like the Electoral College, are these old-timey things that Republicans cling to with, with all their might because 
They know their policies are less popular. They know they do less when in office and get rid of it and force, force, uh, force, force laws to actually happen again uh, because the Republicans are happy with a stalemate and they're constitutionalist, faith, family, freedom, Second Amendment idiots on social media who've never so much looked at a clause in the Constitution um, are happy to embrace the the ignorance. So, and, and Cookie's getting restless. She's she's originally from Kentucky, so I think she's a Second Amendment girl. But uh, that's it. Fuck the Republicans, fuck McConnell, and certainly fuck the filibuster. P.S. Fuck Mansion and Cinema.